Okay, I can't believe I'm having to do this. But, yes, you are not having deja vu. You have seen this bit before. Only, um, I've been forced to redo it. Um, because of the GoPro. And it's so funny because on the previous video, I was literally complaining and moaning about the GoPro microphone always going wrong. And what did it go and do? Actually did exactly what I said it was gonna do. Oh, it's just so annoying. Um, so the dongle that GoPro sell for ridiculous amounts of money, it just stops working for no reason at all. It just stops working. And it doesn't just stop working in, uh, oh, the microphone just cuts off. It, it cuts all audio. Every bit of audio that you got, it just goes completely dead silent. And I'm gonna play that for you now. Okay. So I've had to switch it up and use the far superior Sony RX-02, I believe it's called. Which is a far better camera, um, but it's not really an action camera. Um, but I've got no choice because this is supposed to be a bike review, but I'm just gonna have to crap all over GoPro. GoPro make action, action cameras. Now, the earlier ones used to have a, uh, a bespoke microphone adapter, um, but then the third parties started to make a microphone that worked on the, on the ded dedicated port. And so then what GoPro did was they, uh, they made a USB-C dongle, and you have to use that dongle in order to, um, good audio and that dongle costs a lot of money as I mentioned before it's not cheap and um, that annoyed a lot of people but it's almost like an Apple kind of thing where anyone can make a USB-C to a microphone adapter but unless it was genuine it wouldn't work so you're forced to buy GoPros for an absurd amount of money so that wasn't bad enough but it doesn't work. Half the microphones that you plug into it don't work, which makes no sense whatsoever. And I'm talking about everything from Sennheiser to cheap eBay to Rode. Some microphones don't work. Um, but the Micro Go uh, and the Wireless Go do work for some reason. It makes no sense. And it is just really infuriating. So that's one thing. But then, so what happens is, you start recording, you, 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 you check, see if you've got audio, and yep, you've got audio, great. Um, and it just cuts out, randomly, when you're in the middle of doing something, which you've just seen. And then you, you start making important points, or you do something cool, but you've got no audio, it's completely dead. It doesn't even switch to the external microphone. So you know that the dongle is working because it's cutting the external microphone, but you've got no audio at all, none, and it goes completely silent. So you've got like an hour's worth of silence. Sorry if I sound like I've got a mouthful of stuff. For some reason, the helmet is really squashing my cheeks uh, more than usual. I don't know why. Weird. Um, oh, it's because I've got... Uh, so, okay, so... Because of the GoPro, I've had to switch to Sony, which has got a proper uh, audio input, a dedicated audio input. Um, and it means I've wired in an, a wired mic. And so I think that's why my cheeks are a bit more squashed because I got it wired into the helmet. Okay, so let's go back to the bike because that's what this is about. It's about the bike. And I wanted to, to bring up some valid points. Um, the gearbox in this is so smooth. Now, I mentioned before the clutch is smooth, but what I didn't mention was neutral. So this is first, that is neutral. First, neutral. First, 
<laughs> okay, now it doesn't want to do it. But what I'm trying to demonstrate is how easy it is to get it into neutral. My M207 is a little bit funny about neutral. Every Ducati I ever owned could never find neutral unless you did a rocking back and forth. Um, but this bike finds neutral every time. It's so smooth. It's a very forgiving bike. Very forgiving. Um, and the ergonomics, I, I touched on it previously, and annoyingly, I've really gone into detail with it on the previous video, but no audio. So um, I'm going to have to bring up again. Now, I'm uh, 181 centimetre. Seriously, that guy just touched my back tyre. I'm like... <laughs> anyway, um, I'm 181 centimetre, which in this part of the world, I mean, it's not tall, 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 but it's, it is tall. And this bike is designed for the Asian market. Um, people are a little bit shorter here. This is a scary junction you're about to witness, guys. I really don't like this this one. It's so dangerous. Look at it. You literally got to cut across oncoming traffic and not die. Ah, that wasn't so bad this time. Sometimes it's pretty scary. Ah, this time it's okay. Anyway, I'm six foot tall, but I have loads of space for my legs. There's loads of room on the seat. My arms in a nice position. Oh, where is... I'm still getting used to this helmet. Um, there's a lot of space for me. Considering I'm quite tall compared to the target demographic, that's pretty impressive. Um, it doesn't feel like a small bike. I, I, I've had a couple of 400cc bikes um, back in the day. We're going back to early noughties now. I had a v, RVF 400, VFR 400, the V4s, uh, ZXR 400. I've had loads of 400s actually. God. Anyway, they're tiny little bikes. And I remember I used to feel really, really big on them. I felt it was almost comical, you know. My, my elbows were touching my knees. Um, this is bigger than those grey market 400cc bikes. But not bigger than I can't touch the floor. I just mean there's just more space. You, you, there's, there's a lot more... Yeah, God, I don't like this visor. Ah, it's too hot. Um, there's, there's more freedom of movement. Now, yes, this is a street bike and not a bike with clip-ons, but the same is true of the R15 as well. The ergonomics, it can fit tall people and short people, no problem. Um, the seat height is quite low. Um, it's, it's lower than my MT-07. So comfort, I give it like 10 out of 10 uh, for you know seating position, um, handlebar position, where the brakes are, where the clutch is, the feel of the brake. Well, I've changed the brakes. I'm not gonna, that's not fair. My brakes are way better than standard. The standard brakes on this are not great. But then they shouldn't be, right? I mean, it's, it's only a 150. Well, you can't expect Brembo, you know, <laughs> radial four-piston performance since it's never going to go fast enough to need it. But um, so the, the comfort is really good. Um, it's very smooth for a single. It's got lots of torque. I'm in second gear and I can just roll on. Now, on most small bikes, you can't do that. Um, I'm shifting to fourth now. I'm cruising along at about 50, and it's got torque, which is kind of funny because MT stands for Master of Torque. The MTs are very torquey bikes, and this, this is a torquey bike. For a 150, it is a torquey bike. But as I mentioned before, it's got a, it's got a top end right there. <laughs> Not quite two stroke, but it does have uh, a top end. Um, not unlike the four stroke motocross bikes where you've got to rev them. Um, it's kind of like that. Obviously nowhere near the same power level. Um, now, 20 horsepower is not a lot of horses. <laughs> But considering it's only 155cc and it's a four-stroke single, it's actually quite a lot. 
It is. It is quite a lot. And it's a very flexible engine. You can rev it or you can just cruise along in third or fourth and it will move. It will overtake. See? It's flexible. It's very flexible. Um, and two strokes back in the day, the 125s weren't like that. If you weren't in the right gear, in fact, even the 400s, <laughs> which had 60 horsepower or 50 horsepower, if you weren't in the right gear, you weren't going anywhere. This, this engine's, engine's very flexible. It's very forgiving. You can be in pretty much any, any gear you want. Hey, I, know, I recognize that engine. Why do I... Sorry, I'm being a bit of a nerd here, but that looks like a 2JZ or a 1JZ, but non-turbo, but VVTi. Nerd alert. <laughs> There's loads of 1JZ and 2JZs here, um, and they swap them into every car I can imagine. Okay, I digress. Back to the bike. I'm going to pull over up here somewhere um, so I can talk a little bit more, have a bit more breathing room and not get killed as it is pretty chaotic here. This is called Rama 4. It's quite a busy road. It's a nice, safe, open area. Oh, it's just so easy. It's got a huge turning circle. You can really turn it around. I can... It's almost like those uh, the black minicabs in London. It's a really great little little bike, this. So, so let's have a look, shall we? Let's have a look-see. It's filthy. I still haven't washed it. I am guilty of that. Um, I hope this is in frame. I'm kind of guessing here. I could take my helmet off and put it in my hand, but no, nah, I think you can see it. So there she is, very simple. Single cylinder, 155cc, uh, uses a 140 rear section uh, tire, which is actually quite big for um, a small bike like this. Um, there's my adjustable Olins, I've, I've mentioned those before. Um, I love the color scheme. I love the, the yellow on the wheels, which is like my MT-07, um, and also like my special edition, limited edition m -Slaz. What a disaster. The Sony's overheating, so I'm having to switch to my iPhone. So I apologize in advance for the change in audio quality and video quality. Okay, that's better. Um, every big bike that you see the weight on, um, they, they quote it dry. So like a 600, like 180 kilos, but they're not. They're like 200 because you have to add the fuel, oil and fluids. So this is 135 with full tank of fuel and fluids. So take away 10 kilos easily, at least. So you're looking at a 125 or less weight. It is very light, but at the same time, it's, it's a full size bike, just a little bit lower. So your legs, if you're short, you can fit on this bike. I'm six foot um, or 181 centimeter. But if you're five foot eight, you'll be fine. And pretty much everyone in Asia is about five foot eight anyway, so it's it's perfect. Um, it's a great looker. It's got cool LEDs. Um, the whole thing's LED. You know, indicators, the rear lights, front lights, the clocks. Oh, that's LCD. Um, but it is a, it's a very modern bike. It's got an aluminium swing arm, aluminium frame, upside down forks. I've got Olin's rear suspension, fully adjustable. That's my own upgrade. Uh, yeah, Prokovic is my own, which is again, reduced the weight. So if you say the standard exhaust weighs five kilos, that probably weighs about two, I've lost another three kilos. Um, I've upgraded the front brake, but that's just for me. I, I did that for my own personal reasons. To be honest, the original front brake was plenty. Um, but I really enjoy this bike. I love the way it delivers its power. Um, it's torquey, but at the same time, it's got a very buzzy, zippy top end. Between 9000 and Redline, it pulls, which is quite fun. Um, 20 horsepower is plenty in the city. I don't care what anyone says, it is. 
Um, it's a four stroke, so it's torquey. You don't have to be in the right gear. It's not like the old school bikes where you have to be revving the bejesus out of it all the time. You don't need to. Um, you can pull from 4,000 onwards. It's not gonna you know, rip your head off, but it will go. Um, which is really impressive for a little 150. Uh, I, I really like this bike. It's so easy to throw around. Um, and what I really, really love about this bike is the engine, because they've been, Yamaha have been using this bottom end since 15 years, 15 years easily. And all they've done is change some of the water cooling and the head. And uh, what I'm trying to say is that 20 horsepower is not where it ends with this thing. I know it goes a lot further than that without sacrificing any reliability. Um, you can increase the bore and stroke on this dramatically. Um, but you don't want to go too far because you have heat overheating issues and uh, there's, a, there's a balance, there's a balance. But I know what the balance is, so uh, this is a 30-ish horsepower plus bike. Now, just think about that for a second. If this bike gets to 30 horsepower with 30 foot-pound torque, got a little mini monster um, and that's what this will be um, we're going to turn it into a little mini monster and um, as it stands it's not really a master of torque it's, it's you know calling it the MT is a bit of a stretch but it compared to the other 150s it is much torquier um, it's got more torque than the R15 but the same horsepower which is really weird so technically this is faster than the new R15 technically um, it's just got a slightly lower top speed because of the gearing and also there's no aerodynamics, so... The R15 gets it on the top end, but this beats it everywhere else. So, if, if you're on the 150 market, you're looking at the CBR 150, you're looking at the R15, you're looking at the whole range, Suzuki's, Kawasaki's, no, this is the 150 to get. It is the most modern, it's got the best suspension, it's standard handles fantastically um, it is, it's a great bike and it's fun to ride um, it's very modern um, and the tuning potential on this is insane um, it's insane it really is I've, I've, I'm literally sitting on tons of parts right now um, I just haven't got around there's a lot of work that needs to be done uh, I guess you could say R&D um, again that's a separate thing this is a review about the bike about tuning um, yeah so oh, I love it I love this bike I really do I really really enjoy it um, so yeah if you're in the market for a small bike that'll just get you around this is the one to get they've just brought out the XSR 155 as well which is basically a retro version of this and it's even cheaper and it looks so cool I'm gonna try and put a picture up it comes with the retro Yamaha colors um, and it's the same bike same upside down forks exactly the same it's just got a round headlight which is still LED as well which is pretty cool but like a traditional tank and traditional tail um, it looks just like all the other XSRs um, and it's cheaper than the MT-15 and the R-15 and it makes the same power so if you're a bit tight on money and that's the one to go for or if you like the retro look that's the one to go for. Okay, I'm gonna leave it here. So I'm sorry for the mixture of footage, disaster. If the GoPro mic is not failing, I've got the Sony RXO overheating because of the sun. Um, I'll figure it out somehow, one day. Yes, vlogging in Asia is a lot harder than it is in England. Who would have thought? All right guys, thanks for watching. Bye bye. Isn't it great when you you don't know if it's recording or not, or if it's getting audio, or if it's overheating? It's so much fun being a vlogger on a bike. So much fun. I'm never going to complain about cars again. It's much easier to vlog in a car than it is on a bike, especially in Southeast Asia. All right, how the hell do I get out of here?
Welcome to Thailand, ladies and gentlemen. Health and safety? Nah. Rules? Nah. <laughs> I'll tell you, if, you're, if you worked in the construction industry in England, you'd be absolutely shocked by what you'd see here. And there's a couple of uh, English companies out here too. It's funny. They know what they can get away with out here. They just don't give a, a flying hoot. I'm going slow because I don't want to get covered in muck. I've basically got, oh, I think I have, I've got covered in it, haven't I? Oh, Thailand.